This is Mrs. Wainwright's Math Class, Chapter 10, Lesson 10.7d, Part 13, Elapsed Time, Finding the Elapsed Time. Today's learning target, by the end of this lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I can find the elapsed time when given a start time and an end time. Let's quickly review the vocabulary again. Start time is the time that something begins or starts at. It's a time on a clock. The example, I began riding my bike at 9.15 a.m. 9.15 a.m. is the start time. It's a time on the clock. End time is the time that something finishes or ends at. It's also a time on the clock. So the example, I finished riding my bike at 12.36 p.m. 12.36 p.m. is the end time. And again, it's a time on the clock. Finally, we have elapsed time. Elapsed time is the time that it takes for something to happen. It's an hours and minutes type of time and not a clock time. For example, I rode my bike for 3 hours and 16 minutes. The 3 hours and 16 minutes is the elapsed time. Again, it's not a time on a clock. In this lesson, we'll be given a start time and we'll be given an end time. And what we'll need to find is the elapsed time. Let's see how it's done. Example number one says Daniel started reading Harry Potter at 9.30 a.m. and finished reading at 3.42 p.m. How long did Daniel spend reading? As with any word problem, I go back to my question and see what it's asking. It asks, how long did Daniel spend reading? Let's go back to my question and see what I know. Well, I know that Daniel started reading at 9.30 a.m. And since that's the time that he started reading... This has to be my start time, 9.30 a.m. What else do I know? I know that Daniel finished reading at 3.42 p.m. And when he finished it, that's when he ended. So 3.42 p.m. has to be the end time. The question again is how long did Daniel spend reading? And the amount of time you spend doing something is your elapsed time. And that's what I'm going to need to figure out. So what do I have here? I have a start time and an end time, but I'm going to need to figure out what is the elapsed time. So let's move to the next page and get ourselves started. So we'll divide my page into three columns. I'll label my first column H for hours, my middle column 10M for 10 minutes, and my right column 1M for one minute. I don't know how many hours or minutes. I can't write that down because that's what I'm looking for in this problem. That's what makes this problem a little bit different. But let's see what I do know. I do know Daniel started reading at 9.30 a.m. So I'll write that down in my first column with a line. I also know what time he finished or what his end time was. So I'm going to write that down all the way at the end and just circle it. He finished at 3.42 p.m. So I'm going to need to keep counting and I cannot pass my end time. I cannot pass 3.42 p.m. So let's see how we set this up. So again, if I'm in my hours column, I don't know how many hours there are, but I'm going to keep counting, and I'm going to stop when I pass the time 342 and cross that time out. So let's count by hours. 9.30 a.m. plus one hour would be 10.30 a.m. Is that later than 342? No, that's good. One hour after 10.30 a.m. would be 11.30 a.m. Did I pass 342? No. One hour after 11.30 a.m. would be 12.30. Oh, but when I get to that 12, I have to change. So that would now be p.m. Is 12.30 p.m. later than 3.42 p.m.? No. So I keep going. One hour after 12.30 p.m. would be 1.30 p.m. Did that pass the 3.42? No. Keep going. One hour after 1.30 would be 2.30 p.m. Did that pass 3.42? No. Keep going. One hour after 2.30 would be 3.30 p.m. Is that later than 3.42? Well, it's close to 3.42, but not later than it, so keep going. One hour after 3.30 p.m. would be 4.30 p.m. Is that later than 3.42? Yes. So cross that one out. That one's no good. I have to stop counting by hours at 3.30 p.m. so that I don't pass my end time. So let's count how many hours. One, two, three, four... Five, six. I have six hours. I'll circle that and hold on to that number for later. Take my last time that I had there, which was the 3.30 p.m., move it to my next column. As always, write it and underline it. 
So now I'm going to count by 10 minutes. Again, I don't know how many I have, so I'll have to keep counting and checking to make sure that I don't go past 3.42. So 3.30 p.m. plus 10 minutes would be 3.40 p.m. Is that later than 3.42? No. Let's try another 10 minutes. 3.40 plus another 10 minutes would be 3.50 p.m. Is that later than 3.42? Yes. So I can't use 3.50. Get rid of it. I have to end my 10 minute counting at 3.40 p.m. so I don't go past my end time. So let's see how many 10 minutes I have. Just that one 10 minutes. Circle it and save that for later. Move my last time, which is at 3.40 p.m., to my next column, write it, and underline it. And now I'm going to count one minutes until I get to my actual end time of 3.42. So 3.40 plus one minute is 3.41 p.m. Plus another minute is 3.42 p.m. And that is my end time. So let's count how many single minutes I have here. I have one two single minutes. I'll circle that. So I need my elapsed time here. Remember my elapsed time is not a time on a clock so I should not have that colon or those two dots. I need to have a number of hours and a number of minutes. Let's see what I have. If I go to my first column I see that there are six hours so I'll write down six hours and I go to my ten minute column I see that I have ten minutes my single minutes I have two minutes. 10 plus 2 is 12 minutes in total, so it's 6 hours and 12 minutes. So let's go back and put that into my original problem. The question asks, how long did Daniel spend reading? So the answer, Daniel spent 6 hours and 12 minutes reading. And let's just focus in on this. The question had asked, how long did Daniel spend reading? So I needed to find the elapsed time. And remember, elapsed time is not time on a clock, so it should not be a number with a colon and two more digits. The elapsed time should look like this, a certain number of hours and possibly a certain number of minutes with it. That's what an elapsed time looks like. So my final answer was Daniel spent 6 hours and 12 minutes reading. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 1 right now. Example number 2. The start time is 9.52 a.m. The elapsed time, I don't know. And the end time is 3.11 p.m. So I need to figure out the elapsed time. As always, divide my paper into three columns. First column will be hours, middle column will be 10 minutes, last column will be one minute. Again, I don't know my hours and my minutes because that's what I'm trying to figure out, but what do I know? I do know that my start time is 9.52 a.m. and I do know my end time, so I'll go put that at the end, is 3.11 p.m. So I need to figure out how many hours and minutes. Let's start counting hour by hour. I don't want to pass 311. So 9.52 plus 1 hour would be 10.52 a.m. An hour after that would be 11.52 a.m. An hour later would be 12.52. Oh, but I get to the 12, so I have to change it from a.m. to p.m. So that would be 12.52 p.m. That is not past 3 p.m. yet. An hour later would be 1.52 p.m. and it is not past 3.11 so I can keep going. I get 2.52 p.m. which is not past 3.11. I get 3.52 p.m. and that is past 3.11 so cross that one out. My last time here is 2.52 p.m. Let's see how many hours I used. One, two, three, four, five hours. Let's circle that and save that for later. Move my last good time, which was 2.52 p.m., up into my next column and underline it. And I'm going to count by 10 minutes since I'm in the 10 minutes column. I cannot pass 3.11 p.m. So 2.52 plus 10 minutes would be 2.62. But wait, we don't write times like that. That's not good. So that would turn to the next hour, which is 3.02 p.m. 10 minutes after that would be 3.12 p.m., but 3.12 p.m. is later than my end time, so I can't use that 3.12 p.m. Therefore, let's count my 10 minutes, and I have a ten, one 10-minute 10 section. Circle that, save that for later. 
move that last good time of 3.02 p.m. up to my next column and underline it. And now I'm going to count by single minutes until I get to 3.11 p.m. So 3.02 p.m. plus one minute is 3.03 p.m. plus another minute is 3.04 p.m. plus another minute is 3.05 p.m. I'm going to stop when I get to 3.11. Plus another minute is 3.06 p.m. 3.07 p.m. Uh-oh, I'm running out of room. Good thing I used pencil for math. Let's erase that. Move that down further on the page. So my end time is still 3.11. Okay, after 3.07 plus one minute would be 3.08 p.m., 3.09 p.m., 3.10 p.m. And I kind of ran out of room, but I guess that's okay because my last time right down there is the 3.11 p.m. So let's count all of my minutes, including that 3.11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have 9 minutes. So my elapsed time is in hours and minutes time. I have 5 hours and I have 10 minutes plus 9 minutes is 19. So it's 5 hours and 19 minutes. Let's go back and put that answer into my original problem. And my elapsed time is 5 hours and 19 minutes. Let's just note on this that I wrote it in hours and minutes. I did not write 5 colon 19 because that is a clock time and that is different than 5 hours 19 minutes. So that would not be correct. So that would be the wrong way. The correct way is the way we wrote it here on the line, written with the word or abbreviation hour and minutes. So the final answer, the elapsed time, is 5 hours and 19 minutes. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number two right now. So hopefully by now you can confidently say, I can find the elapsed time when given a start time and an end time. Again, if you use the strategy in the columns exactly the way we showed you in this lesson, it makes it very simple. But when students and even adults don't use that strategy, they often get these problems wrong. So take the time, go through it step by step, and use that strategy. As always, we will continue practicing the class. If you have any questions or concerns, please see a teacher and we will help you with it. Good luck with this lesson.